One stormy night, Nastya, a blind woman, wandered through the dark halls of a boarding school for the visually impaired. She settled by a window in a bedroom until her friend, Anya, woke and told her to return to bed. Nastya, lost in thought, asked if the rustling leaves sounded like the ocean. Anya nodded, then inquired if she had made a decision. Nastya admitted she hadn't. The next morning, Nastya and other women went to church for communion. At breakfast, while heading to Anya's table, she was summoned by a woman to see the principal. Anya muttered that the principal had been seeking her all day. In the principal's office, Ludmilla, occupied with a call, eventually asked Nastya if she was still considering. Nastya felt uneasy, reminded she had only a year left to decide before it would be too late for the surgery. Ludmilla emphasized that a benefactor was already paying for it. Nastya realized the benefactor's condition was marriage, but she didn't want to marry a stranger. Ludmilla argued that many dreamt of marrying a wealthy person. Nastya remained firm in her refusal. Frustrated, Ludmilla insists that the man is in love with Nastya. She finds it unbelievable that Nastya would turn down this opportunity when he might be her only chance to see again. However, Nastya sticks to her desire to become a nun at the convent. Ludmilla scolds her, saying she's too young to decide to shut herself away in a church. She tries to use Nastya's faith against her, suggesting that maybe this man is a gift from God, and rejecting him could be a mistake. Nastya hesitates but agrees to make a decision by the next morning. Later, she goes to the church offices and meets Serafima, the head nun, who takes her inside. Serafima asks if Nastya has decided about the surgery, but Nastya admits she hasn't. Serafima suggests that perhaps Nastya is just afraid to admit that she wants the surgery. She reveals that 10 years ago, an elder nun saw Nastya's potential and chose her to be the next head nun. Nastya is torn, wondering if this opportunity to regain her sight could be a sign from God. Serafima decides that Nastya has already made her choice and bids her farewell. Nastya goes to the library, where the librarian offers her a new audiobook, but she decides to listen to Scarlet Sales again. The librarian gives Nastya the earphones to listen to the audiobook and also offers her a sandwich. Nastya tries to decline, but the librarian insists, thinking that the students at the boarding school might not be getting enough to eat. That night, Nastya struggles to sleep, and Anya asks her why she's still restless after making her decision. Nastya reveals that she's figured out the identity of her mysterious benefactor. She remembers a moment when she practiced with an all-men's choir, and one of them introduced himself as Andre, while holding her hand to feel his face. Believing Andre to be her benefactor, Nastya rushes to the headmistress's office the next morning and accepts the offer. Later, Nastya is driven to the airport with Marina, who explains that the benefactor is Mikhail Alexandrovich and that she'll handle the marriage contract until he signs it. Despite her disappointment, Nastya boards Mikhail's private jet, feeling excited as she experiences flying for the first time, heading to Germany for the surgery. After the surgery, Nastya opens her eyes to see doctors and a nurse eagerly waiting for her. The nurse asks if she can see, and Nastya is amazed as she views the world around her. They guide her to the window, and she approaches a mirror, filled with wonder. Upon catching sight of her reflection, Nastya drops to her knees in prayer. Soon discharged from the hospital, she marvels at the sights during the drive to meet her benefactor, even requesting a stop by a fountain to take it all in. At a hotel later, Marina finally introduces Nastya to her benefactor, Mikhail Alexandrovich. To Nastya's surprise, he's surrounded by servants and a masseuse tending to his head. Feeling overwhelmed, she finds him quite different from what she imagined. Mikhail offers her a drink to ease the tension and raises a toast to his upcoming coronation as Tsar, implying that she will become the Tsaritsa. Overwhelmed, Nastya hears him casually mention the power of money and how it governs the world. She disagrees, asserting that the world is misguided, prioritizing greed over faith in God. Taken aback, Mikhail is impressed by Nastya's stance. He remarks that the world is indeed a corrupt place, but expresses his admiration for her conviction. He explains that in such a world, being a czar holds more value than anything else. Nastya questions why he chose her, given that they've never met before. Mikhail reveals that he encountered her a month ago during a visit to her town for a business project. He attended a church choir performance where he heard her solo, leaving a lasting impression on him. Since then, he couldn't shake the thought of her. That night, Nastya waits anxiously in Mikhail's bedroom. When he arrives and touches her, she feels nervous. Understanding her apprehension, he asks about her experience, but she confesses she's only heard about it from classmates. He encourages her to show him what she knows, but she simply touches his face. 
Growing impatient, Mikhail instructs her to remove her gown. As she complies, he takes charge, guiding her through the encounter. The next morning, Nastya feels ashamed about the previous night. Despite his own feelings of guilt, Mikhail suggests they have breakfast together. Over breakfast at a fancy restaurant, Mikhail discusses their future, planning to have two weddings, one in Moscow for the glamour, and another in her hometown for her friends to attend. Later, Marina presents Nastya, who has undergone a makeover, to Mikhail. Impressed by her appearance, they return to Russia. Upon arrival, Mikhail introduces Nikolai, his chief of security, during the drive. They reach Mikhail's mansion, where the servants warmly welcome their return. One of the staff guides, Nastya, around the mansion, showing her to her room, which conveniently connects to Mikhail's. Alone in her room, Nastya peers through the window and spots armed guards patrolling the grounds. The next morning, she finds Mikhail feeding his pet birds as she greets him. The staff lead her to the breakfast table, where Mikhail joins them. He suggests she start waking early so they can chat during breakfast and reminds her to inform security if she wants to go anywhere. Nastya expresses a desire to take a walk, but Mikhail insists she be accompanied by security. Later, as Mikhail drives out, they encounter a slow-moving cargo train. His security officer remarks that it was Mikhail's idea, and its contents remain a mystery. Mikhail abruptly ends the conversation and calls one of his secretaries, instructing them to establish a new charity fund with Nastya as its head. Meanwhile, Nastya visits the security office and requests to be driven to the beach. Once there, she's guided to a viewing area and given binoculars. Peering through them, she sees the vast expanse of the sea for the first time. Early one morning, Nastya wakes to find Mikhail approaching her bed. He confides in her, sharing his struggles with morning pain and his visits to a Swiss doctor who diagnosed it as phantom pain from psychosis. He becomes agitated, expressing fear of imminent danger, then abruptly composes himself. Overwhelmed by his inner turmoil, he confides in Nastya about a haunting childhood encounter with the homeless woman who foretold his demise. Stressed about the woman who knew his name without him knowing her, Mikhail demands comfort from Nastya, his fiancée. She finds it awkward but tries to calm him. Later, Nastya seeks solace in a church, where a priest blesses her and she weeps before holy images. After leaving the church, security drives her to a street where field medics treat the wounded Mikhail. He greets her cheerfully, explaining he was in a shootout and lost his guards, seeing it as validation of the homeless woman's prophecy. That evening, Mikhail finds Nastya reading a braille prayer book and questions why she hasn't transitioned to regular letters yet. She admits she's still adjusting. Feeling flirtatious, he suggests she needs to nurture her desires more. Disgusted, she rebuffs him, emphasizing the importance of nurturing the spirit over desire. Mikhail laughs, arguing that even monks who starve themselves don't change. Nastya retorts that he, who never prays, has no right to criticize holy men. Their disagreement sparks tension, and he tries to kiss her, but she resists. He scolds her, warning that their differing opinions could cause harm. Insisting his worldview is true, Mikhail clashes with Nastya, who counters that it's only his reality, not the universal truth. During breakfast the next morning, Mikhail expresses disappointment at Nastya's simple attire. She explains she's going to church, prompting him to joke that, if she's living, she might as well do it stylishly. Curious. Nastya asks what he would have done if her surgery failed. Mikhail bluntly admits he would have sent her back to school, claiming handicapped individuals only bring trouble. Seeking clarity, Nastya questions if he loves her. Mikhail hastily affirms. In response, she proposes a white marriage, a union without intimacy. Mikhail's reaction is sudden and aggressive, grasping her neck and accusing her of not loving him. When she confirms, he releases her satisfied with her honesty amid what he perceives as insincere affection from others. That night, they board the private jet for a performance in Moscow. Upon arrival, Nastya remarks on the scent of blood, to which Mikhail cryptically comments on power and its consequences. In the performance hall, Mikhail leads her to a lobby where he converses with a middle-aged woman. She asks if Nastya is his wife, and he humorously responds that she's his widow. The woman reciprocates the joke, referring to her husband as her widower. After the performance, they return to the plane. Noticing Nastya's somber mood, Mikhail inquires about her feelings. She expresses dismay over the lavish spending at the performance, which could have been used to save a life. Mikhail brushes it off indifferently, questioning the value of saving a single man's life. Upon returning home, 
Nastya rushes out of the car in tears, accusing Mikhail of having a tainted soul. She prays for his salvation daily as taught by the priests. However, Mikhail dismisses her concerns, considering himself merely eccentric compared to her. At breakfast the next day, Mikhail instructs Nastya to assist the wedding planners. Confused, she questions why she must, and he patiently clarifies that she needs to make decisions about details like the dress and the carriage. Curious about the carriage, she prompts Mikhail, who reminds her that they previously agreed she would ride in a carriage with him and receive a golden key from the mayor. Feeling scolded, Nastya defends herself, prompting Mikhail to attribute the difficulty in communication to her. Sensing Heronis, Mikhail offers to let her visit the boarding school to see her friends, which she eagerly accepts. Upon arrival, Nastya is surprised to find the place deserted. Lyudmila and the staff welcome her warmly, informing her of Mikhail's generous donation for renovations. Explaining that the students have been temporarily relocated due to the renovations, Lyudmila escorts Nastya to her room. Alone in the room, Nastya reflects on her past. After some time, she decides to visit the church but hesitates at the entrance. Instead of going to the church, Nastya seizes the opportunity to explore the town for the first time. She wanders through its streets, taking in the sights and sounds, and eventually finds herself at a musical instrument store. While browsing, she encounters Andre, who suggests an album from his band. Recognizing him, Nastya suddenly feels dizzy. Concerned, Andre offers to take her to a nearby cafe. Over coffee, Andre discusses his role as a lyricist in the band, sharing that he finds inspiration during the late hours of the night. Later that evening, he invites her to a party, and Nastya spends time with his friends. Eventually, Andre takes her to his room, showing her the window where he sits at night for inspiration. Impressed by the view, Nastya expresses her appreciation. Finding solace in his company, she impulsively kisses Andre. However, realizing her mistake, she decides she must leave. Andre asks her to call him during his creative hours that night and gives her a copy of their album before she departs. Later that evening, Nastya listens to Andre's music in her hotel room, evoking a rush of emotions. Encouraged, she calls Andre, and they discuss love passionately. Andre compares it to a powerful force, resonating with Nastya. Feeling a pull towards Andre, she accepts his invitation, sneaking to his building to avoid Mikhail. Fatigued, she hesitates on Andre's floor, but ultimately decides to leave alone. Meanwhile, Mikhail learns of Nastya's call to Andre, questioning her integrity. As Nastya returns, Mikhail confronts her violently, dragging her into his room and asserting control. The next morning, Nikolai delivers troubling news. Andre overdoses it and leap it from a window. Confirmed by witnesses, Nikolai hints at orchestrated events and reassures Mikhail it's Hamlet. Mikhail approaches Nastya, still shaken on the bed. He gently informs her of Andre's accident, deflecting blame when she accuses him. Disturbed, Mikhail seeks solace in a bar, discussing ominous signs with the bartender. He shares a poem about peacemakers' fierce nature and dismisses a visitor seeking him due to the governor's arrival. Marina discovers Nastya's bleeding eyes and flees in panic. Nastya is escorted from the hotel, her eyes bandaged. Lost and alone in heavy rain, she finds her way back to the church. Reflecting on her choices, she kneels in penance, seeking forgiveness. In the end, she finds solace in faith. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit the bell icon and stay connected with us.